The performance of Jody Arias, how did she do? Do you think a jury believes her? Jeff, I'll start with you. So there it is, right out of the gate. She begins the answer. She looks and plays to the jury a little bit. Was she effective right out of the gate with that answer? No way. I mean, you know, she's, uh, she's robotic, to say the least. She seems like a serial killer to me. I mean, that jury, uh, to hear her say the simple answer is that he attacked me and I defended myself in such a monotone voice. I mean, come on. They saw the pictures. They know what happened here. For her to talk like that means people are telling her what to say, like her lawyers, but they're not telling her how to say it. Get to what we are waiting for here is how she ended up killing him. But Jeff, what's going on here? Why so much detail? And we're getting her whole life story. Well, they want her whole life story. They want her as close to that jury. Uh, you want the jury to look at her, see her, listen to her, be, you know, you know, they, they don't want her to kill her. <laughs> so they want her to know her like a person in the room. It's very hard to put somebody you know uh, to death. Uh, I think that Brewer, by the way, uh, when he testified, was a great witness for uh, the defense. He was very humanizing. He was with her for four years. He allowed uh, his son to be with her. And I think this testimony for her has been her best testimony. It's very humanizing that she was with somebody for four years, fell in love with them, was taking care of the child on the weekends. It's humanizing. Uh, it's still fairly deadpan, if you ask me. Right. But it's, it's pretty humanizing. That's what they want. They want her to be a human being you can't kill. Got it. Uh, Monica, you agree with that? And the, the word Jeff is, is working off of there is humanizing. That's what they want, right? Yes. They want this jury to connect with her. Uh, and she's <laughs> sheepish right. at times. You know, she'll say something and go, does that make sense? You know, things like that. Yep. Talk about that, Monica. They definitely want to humanize her and to show that she is a person, she is a woman, that has the emotions and has had these life history, uh, these life experiences. They want to her to see her as a person, not just a monster that committed this crime. They want her seen as a loving individual, a caring individual, so that they are less likely to kill her. Because here in Arizona and everywhere else, actually, if there's a death penalty, it's the jury that has to decide to inflict the death penalty or not. Even though the prosecution brings it up, it's the jury that decides. So the more she's talking, the more she's bringing out these experiences, the more she's able to build some rapport with the jury members. Got Maybe it. there's um, some artists on there. Maybe there's people that have been in abusive relationships or that have been in love with somebody that's older. Every topic and interest she brings up is another opportunity for her to connect with a juror. And I think the more she talks and talks, that's what they're trying to do if they stay awake. Yeah, it's, that's a great point. You know, you're, you're, as she goes on and we're waiting, you know, obviously right. to get to the Travis Alexander part of her life, uh, that's yes. what we're getting here. Jeff, help, enlighten us here. How much preparation goes into this? How much did, sh did tr Jody Arias and, and Kirk Nurmi, the attorney here, talk about her life story to where he knows every detail and they can go through this yeah. month by month practically? Well, you would think so, although there was a question earlier um, where she, he, he didn't have the answer. She, I forget what it was now, but he didn't have, it was surprising to me that he didn't have the answer about something, uh, you know, I think it was about causing welts on her, one of the people that, you know, uh, the father or whatever hit her and didn't cause welts and the mom did. Uh, you'd be, you know, you're surprised by some things, but I, I must say this, uh, you know, uh, it, it, all this is prepared way in advance. They know what they're going to do. Wait till you see the prosecutor's preparation in this case. Um, this is nothing. The prosecutor has to put together all the different, you know, versions and statements and the inconsistencies and the impossibilities of everything she's saying. And she hasn't even got to the murder yet. Prosecutor's going to leave all this alone, except for maybe Brewer. I'll tell you, Brewer was a witness on the stand who was mild-mannered, soft-spoken, mm -hmm. doesn't fit the character of another one of these guys who, you know, know, uh, was abusing her. I don't know how they're going to deal with that at the end of this part of the testimony that maybe they'll come up with a secret we don't know about. But um, yeah, she's prepared. Got uh, it. Okay. And let's take a quick break, guys. And I think she's pretty confident. Jeff, what do you think? Well, I mean, I agree with your assessment, but it's a pale shadow of domestic abuse. In fact, it's an offense to anybody who has ever been domestically right. abused. Mm. Um, it's This is calculated. They're using a self-defense, which in 
Arizona puts the burden back on the state once you raise it. It's unusual. Many states, you have the burden in an affirmative defense. In Arizona, once you raise it, it is now the state's obligation to disprove it. And in addition to that, domestic abuse is a special category, which is especially easy for a defendant once it gets raised. There is a question whether you, it requires verbal abuse, I mean, uh, physical abuse or just verbal abuse. But even what we're talking about here, the type of abuse she's been through with the parents, oh, my mom hit me with a wooden spoon. I know uh, kids that went to school, you know, parochial schools had worse treatment from nuns than what the mom did. Um, and then these boyfriends, what? He was a Wiccan. He cheated on me. Okay, that means you get to go kill this guy, stab him 27 times and shoot him? It's, it's ridiculous. You know, and you're talking, you know, that's what the prosecutor, Juan Martinez, wants to do. He'll Bring do it, it back. Bring it back to the 29 stab wounds, his head practically being cut off, and then he's shot in the head for good measure. We're going to talk again to Monica when we come back about how does prosecutor Juan Martinez handle this. She's soft-spoken, poor Jody. But on the other hand, she admits she killed him. Jeff, we got about a minute. Hit on that. If you're Juan Martinez, do you just zone in on the Travis Alexander portion when we finally get to it? Or is he going to backtrack to some of this childhood stuff that we're hearing? Uh, I think he'll do a little of this and a lot of the actual murder. Let me just tell you one thing about... Uh, Mr. Martinez. I've covered a number of these cases, as you have, Mike. He is there alone. Very unusual for these type of high-profile cases. He is trying that case alone. The fellow sitting next to him is an investigator only. Um, he's a tough cookie. He knows what he's doing. Um, his name is Martinez, by the way. And I will tell you, being in that jury, I was very surprised to see that jury is, none of them are obviously a minority. I don't know whether they are or aren't, but they don't obviously, they look white is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, he can attack Jody Arias, the murderer, because she's a murderer. Yes, he attacked me. I defended myself. We are, our lawyers are with us again, Jeff Gold, Monica Lindstrom. Uh, Jeff, let me let you weigh in on this first. So this trial is marked by, again, a brutal murder, all these sex details, and I'm sure a jury is like, man, what more is going to come at us? And then over the last couple of days, for the most part, it's been soft. It's been Jody Arias' life story. Does that play well for the defense to soften this trial up a little bit? Well, I think it does, but ultimately they're going to have to talk about why it was self-defense. They're going to have to talk about the murder. Um, they're trying to humanize her, uh, and in Monica's uh, term, they, she wants a, re a rapport with the jury, which I agree is, is what's going on here. But they're going to have to deal with the details, and as just, we just mentioned before the break, Juan Martinez is going to come back with the brutality of this murder. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind. At one point last week, he put up, uh, it as a surprise, a picture of the slashed uh, neck of uh, Travis Alexander when there was some talk of slashing of tires and, you know, in the case, it, it didn't come out in the testimony, but everybody knows it. So he's not going to mince words. Uh, he's not going to pull any punches. Whatever the judge lets him do, he's going to beat this girl up. Right. Much more emotional as we find out about her relationship with Travis Alexander. We may hear this phone sex tape, and that's when it's, it's going to, I think, explode in that courtroom. Your thoughts? Well, it's certainly going to be more interesting. There's no doubt about that. I mean, uh, this case has uh, been filled with that and nude pictures, of course, the sex tape, the allegations of various kinds of sexual acts, the, the photographs they took in the shower, and all, all of that will make it more interesting. Um, but the focus of this case is the death of uh, Travis Alexander, and when the facts for either side start focusing on that, everything that we've heard in the last two days is going to recede, because nothing in here has been dramatic enough to overcome it. Even if you had testimony so far that she was beaten, abused, tied up, left in closets, I'm not so sure it would overcome it, but certainly what we've heard will pale in significance to the, uh, to the allegations that are real in this case, that she killed Travis Alexander by, by cutting him 27 times, slashing his throat so he was almost decapitated and shooting him after. You know, that's such a great point because it's going to 